LHS here will signify left-hand side. I claim x is in the left-hand side. It, this is true. If and only if, what does that mean to be in the complement of a union? It means that it's not in the union. Would you agree? And if it's not in the union, that means it's not what? It's not in any of the e, of the e sub alpha. So x is not in any e sub alpha. With me? OK. But if x is not in any of the e sub alpha, then x is in all of the complements. In all, in all the complements in each one for all alpha in it. But if x is in all the complements, then x is in what? The intersection. That's what it means to be in the intersection. And all these, um, all these uh, implications are bidirectional, so you can go back backwards this way as well. Happy? All right. So this fact will be very, very useful to us. Now that we have uh, noted that open sets are complements of closed sets. So is it true that the union of open sets is open for, for arbitrarily many uh, uh, open sets? Yes? A is an index set, if you like. It's like a, it's like normally when you're used to thinking of index sets that are natural numbers, right? So um, each of you has a bank account, right? And I label the bank account by um, that's the first one, that's the second one, that's the third one, it's the fourth one, etc. So the index set is one, two, three, four, dot, dot, dot. Here we're gonna label every um, every set by some huge index set that may not be countable. It could be one for every real number, right? Every real number has a bank account, and I'm going to label it by the real number that it's associated with, something like that, okay? Okay, but for the most part, you don't have to worry too much about it. We just, just think of this as any possible collection, and that alpha is just reminding me it doesn't have to be countable. Okay, so uh, here's a theorem. It's a four-part theorem. So the claim is that the arbitrary union of open sets what do you think? Is it open or not necessarily open? How many people say the arbitrary union of open sets is necessarily open? That's right. It is in fact open. And uh, similarly, so there's there's pr several parts to this. The I claim the arbitrary intersection of closed sets is closed. Now, is it what about what if you take a finite intersection of open uh, an arbitrary intersection of open sets? Is the arbitrary intersection of open sets open? How many people say yes? How many people say no? Can you give me an example? Arbitrary intersection of open sets that's not open? Yes. Can can you give me a specific example? Okay, uh, but the, are those circles open? Uh, yeah, so I don't think it's possible for two open sets to overlap in a, exactly one point. But maybe, yes, Anil? Oh, okay. So zero to one over n? 
Now, if you take 0 to 1 over n and you intersect all those, what's the intersection of 0 to 1 over n? It's empty, isn't it? Right, which is still open. But now you're saying, how about what? Minus 1 over n to 1 over n? So here's an aside. Check this out. If I take the intersection of minus 1 over n to 1 over n, n goes from 1 to infinity, the claim is that this is what's inside every set from minus 1 over n to 1 over n. The only point in, in all these sets is what? 0. Is this an open set? No, it's not open. But each of these is open. So the arbitrary intersection is not of open sets not open, but if you allow if you only take finite unions. Oh, finite, sorry, uh, finite uh, intersections of open sets of of open sets is open. And the corresponding fact is that the finite union of closed sets is closed. Okay, very, very important facts about open and closed sets. So um, let's, uh, let's see if we can't give some justification for this. So you're going to help me do this proof. Let's do part A. Now, Jenny just gave us a, an argument for why the union of two open sets is open. How would you show the union of arbitrary and many open sets is open? Well, very similar way, right? So let's, let's uh, take a point that's in uh, an open set, a union of arbitrary union. So let's let, if x is in, let's say a sub alpha union over alpha. Oh, sorry, I don't want to use the same letter as this a. Um, give me another letter you like. How about c? Oh, uh, so u. u is often used for open sets, by the way. It's customary to use u for open sets. Oh, that kind of looks like the union symbol, though, doesn't it? <laughs> I'll be very careful. I'll put it. I'll give every u a tail. Is that okay? How's that? Okay. Here we go. Suppose these are open. So I'm gonna just gonna say that the, each of these is open, and it's a union. What does it mean to be in the union? Well, that means that the point is in each uh, is in one of these sets, right? Now, what our goal here is to show that every point in X in this union has a neighborhood around it that's completely contained inside this big thing. And the strategy is, oh, well, this means it's in one of the things, and that has what? A neighborhood that contains this and completely is completely inside. So that's the that's the goal here. So we're just going to say this then. This means that x is in some u sub alpha, and uh, which is open. So that has an interior. Uh, it has a neighborhood around it because it's an interior point, which is an open set. So x uh, has a neighborhood. Let's call it n. Uh, that completely uh, n sub x such that uh, x is in n sub x, which is completely contained in u sub alpha. But now what? u sub alpha is inside what? The union. As desired. What did I find? I found a neighborhood, uh, which gives. Uh, so, if, if, if you want to help the reader, you might say, "So we we found. So we have the desired neighborhood." Everybody happy with that? 